It is my pleasure. My name is Frank Robinson. I'm a vice president in the governmental relations unit at NJBIA. Welcome again, and uh, we especially want to thank and welcome the four legislative leaders for being here today. We know that they're very busy this time of year, trying to finish up their legislative session, so we appreciate them taking time out from their schedule. They will be uh, introduced to you individually by our moderator. We're very pleased to have a new moderator this year for the panel. I believe it's his first time with us, Mr. Steve Adubato, Dr. Steve Adubato. As many of you know, Steve is a uh, distinguished professor, uh, speaker, coach. Um, uh, he has got some Emmy Awards uh, for his shows on PBS, including Caucus New Jersey and One on One. We're very pleased to have him with us today. And most importantly, and most of you don't know and you don't see this in his resume, he was one of the youngest elected members of the General Assembly 30 years ago. And so that's how long Steve and I have known each other. We worked together way back then. I worked for him. He was an assembly man, and I was just a staffer. But uh, Assemblyman Adubato, thank you for being here today. Thank you, Frank. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. What uh, Frank fails to mention, uh, 25, youngest member elected, one of the youngest members elected to the state legislature two years later. It's about the youngest member to lose his seat in the uh, state legislature. Thank you, Frank, for leaving that out. It is my honor and my pleasure to be here this morning with our friends at uh, New Jersey Business and Industry Association. I promise you a very dynamic, interactive, and candid, gentlemen, did you hear that operative word? Candid dialogue. Mr. President, candid dialogue about the important issues of the day. And I also promise you that we'll be engaging you. I know that you're using social media to do that, but we're going to go kick it old school. I actually have a microphone that you can speak into. You don't have to tweet your comments in this particular conversation, but you can tweet them as well. And by the way, the question was asked, which tax, Michelle, do we want cut? The, the income tax, the inheritance tax. My answer was it wasn't up there. It's my taxes. Those are the taxes that I want <laughs> cut. Michelle, could you add that the next time? Um, so it is my honor and my pleasure to introduce a very distinguished panel. Join me in welcoming the Speaker of the General Assembly, Mr. Vinnie Prieto. <laughs> this gentleman does not like the title, Mr. President. I uh, refuse to call him what he wants to be called, Steve. He is the President of the State Senate, Steve Sweeney. A gentleman with extraordinary lineage in this state. Uh, great interview every time I get to talk to him. The leader of the Republicans in the state Senate, Tom Kane. Now, this gentleman likes to say this, and I don't know, I don't know why he does it, but he says uh, he, in fact, won this title. The funniest lawyer in the state of New Jersey, which clearly is, you know, there's not a lot of competition. Um, John Bramnick, who is the leader of the Republicans in the Assembly. But the irony is he's actually really funny. Uh, gentlemen, nothing funny about this. Mr. President, Steve, what are we going to do about the Transportation Trust Fund? Because I don't know if you can read everything that you hear uh, in the press, but Bernie, Flynn, did you hear that the Transportation Trust Fund is running out of money? Just heard, Steve. Just heard. Me too. What are we going to do, Steve Sweeney? Well, we are working together with the administration. I think we're all trying to find a solution. Uh, and I said this today, and I got beat up pretty good on the radio. I said there's no free... You must have been on 101.5? Oh, yeah, of course. Just checking. I just wanted to make sure. No free ride, because it's going to come from something. But New Jersey is a logistic state. That's what drives our economy, and we can't ignore the need to have a, to have a plan in place. So, but most importantly, which no one wants to report is, I think we all agree, whatever we do, eventually do, is it has to be constitutionally mandated that every single penny has to go to transportation, not to running an, uh, a department. Steve, and, uh, and I, I really do think, when you do a poll and you say, do you want to raise this tax or that tax? I don't know many people who raise their hand and say yes. But if you say, do you want to fix our roads? I think a lot of people would say yes. And if the perfect example is the turnpike right now. Mm. That $2.3 billion investment is making an enormous difference in people's lives. Besides it being like a uh, NASCAR race, what it used to be, it's, it's actually an enjoyable drive now. 
and cuts about 25 minutes off of my drive time because I'm up in North Jersey on a regular basis, sometimes even visiting my friend Vinny. Yeah. Any particular reason why you're up in North Jersey more these days? Because I've noticed that Steve Sweeney is hanging out in the North. Any, do you just enjoy seeing the North these days? You know, being from the country. The no, 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 no. Being from you are very cynical, Brandon. He is. Go ahead. And there's nothing funny about being a lawyer. You know what it is? It's, it's, it's a culture thing. I'm from the country, and I'm learning about the big cities now. I'm, I'm, in, I'm introducing him to the culture of the North. <laughs> oh, is, is that what you're That's doing? Right. It is. So, so you're a country mouse. I, yes. I <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting to see him in Hoboken. But he's in, I am there Friday night, next Friday night. You enjoy the city, but why have you visited all 70 communities in Bergen County then? <laughs> I'm sorry, Steve. I, I, I tease. That's but right. are, you, are you for a gas tax? I'm for funding the TTF. And honestly, this is, a, this is an approach that it can't be my idea of any. It's got to be ours, including okay. John and Tom. This, isn't, this, can't be a political, this can't be a political issue. This is too important to the state's economy. You know, the best thing is you have business organizations that are with labor and all sorts of different developers all That's saying, right. fix this now. So I really, I guess, whatever it's going to be, I said it's not a free ride, so it's going to cost somewhere something. We just got to figure it out. Senator Kane, take it on. Well, the most important thing we can do first is, number one, see what needs to be funded. Secondly, figure out how we can take out every bit of overlap and cost and inefficiency that exists within the system, and then come up with a responsible plan. You know, at that juncture, we need to figure out with the, that type of resources dedicated, that type of needs met, how do we find that solution? And it's a multiple different pots of, of uh, focus in that regard, and that's, that's what the conversation that we're having right now. Mr. Speaker, you've been on Capital Report, uh, clearly the best program on public television right now, and I've heard you say to me and my colleague Rafael Piermont, yes, we need a gas tax. And I have Make not, the case. I have not been shy about it. I've started talking about it since I um, took the oath as speaker. It's been one of the first things that I thought was the right thing. And number one, we do need to find out how we invest this. But uh, to Senator Kane, just to let you know, we're going to have zero dollars. Every penny that we get right now coming into the Transportation Trust Fund is going to pay down debt. So we got about $1.2 billion. And when you need to fix our roads and our infrastructure and take care of bridges and to make sure that it's for the quality of life and for the people and to attract businesses here also because what makes New Jersey attractive is that we are a corridor state and for our road infrastructure for the proximity we have to New York City so it makes it all a win-win and when you add in the price of gas where it is right now it's it's sort of an easy lift it's this low-hanging fruit so as uh, Senate President says you have have to pay for it so there has to be something we have many other challenges and we need revenue so I haven't been shy about it because there is a net benefit back to everybody when you think about six hundred dollars you spend on repairs to your vehicles from wear and tear that is substantial amount of money that you're going to be paying way way less than that for the average driver that that drives 1200 miles a year so it's a win-win for the whole state of New so Jersey. So it's a win-win Mr. Speaker and but you need bipartisan support for this do you not? We we definitely. I, he, I've said it. We all have to jump off the cliff together on this. So you have to and jump off. Nobody, nobody gets a free I, pass. So you need to jump off the cliff together. Yeah. Uh, Assemblyman Ramnick, are you prepared to jump off the cliff with Vinnie Prieto? <laughs> Holding hands with Vinnie Prieto is one of my priorities, and jumping off the cliff is my second highest priority. That's so it. I'm, I'm going to jump off the cliff with him. That's yeah, it. John, <laughs> let's hear for John Bramnick and Vinnie Prieto jumping off the cliff together. Very short clip. Now, very, except he, I don't know if he said as, he was supporting a gas tax. As, as, we're vo as we're jumping off the cliff, we're voting differently on the bill. <laughs> so, no, I'm only kidding. So here, yeah. here's the situation. This is the last thing I'm worried about because anytime there's a crisis, government fixes it. There's no doubt we have to keep the bridges up and have to keep the roads uh, working. So we will fix this, period. And I'm convinced we'll do it together with the governor. Now, there is no doubt but we have to find the money, no doubt about it. But we also have to send a message at the same time that if we're going to raise some tax, if that happens, that we have to make sure other taxes are proportionally lowered. For example? For example, people are leaving this state 
in droves or thinking about leaving the state because of the tax climate. If you just raise another tax and send no other message out there, a unified message from all of us, we're, we're to lower some other taxes, such as the estate tax, mm. which people leave to go to Florida or other, sta or other states, possibly a pension tax because people move across the border. We have to have a unified message sure. here, not only that we raise taxes, but we lower taxes too. So, so Senator, you would consider supporting a gas tax if, in fact, the speaker would support cutting the estate tax. But I think you just said that. No, no. Yeah. What I said is. <laughs> no, what I said is. I heard it. You, you heard it. I heard it. You heard it. You hear what you want to hear, yeah, right, man? I heard it. it. The people who say that there's some money out there to find, to put, to fix the roads out, okay, bring that money up here Go ahead. and we'll use it. We need some source of funding, but you can't do that in a vacuum and ignore the major problem we have in this state, which is a very bad business climate. But would you be open? And to your point, all When the governor of this state says he's, oh, everything's on the table, guess what? I'm on the table. Everything's on the table with See, me, the, too. <laughs> Come, that's hopeful. I, I always hope with John. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, hold on. Uh, then, uh, in all serious, Mr. Speaker, mm -hmm. in all seriousness, the Assemblyman is saying that you just can't raise a tax without considering, because yeah. we're a ridiculously high tax state. He makes a legitimate point, does he not, about I, the estate I, tax? Listen, I, I, and I don't so, see your Democratic colleagues jumping on board with that. Well, let me tell you, that's some, an option that we've been looking at. And what does that uh, mean, we've been looking at? Was that a euphemism for what? We're punting no, again? No, not to punting, to seeing how we can tackle this, because at the end of the day, you have to have a net positive. Go ahead. So if, to your if, you, if you raise a certain tax and, and drop another tax, it all depends. When you talk about the state tax, it's somewhere shy of almost, I thought it was about $350 million. It's closer to almost $400 million that comes into the coffers. So and as we are going to dedicate... As uh, Senator Sweeney said, 100% of the money we get for uh, TTF has to be constitutionally dedicated. So we can't touch it because as the former budget chairman, the state budget supersedes anything. So we want to make sure that that's in a box that you can't touch. As you lower other taxes, it creates a hole in your budget. So you need a net positive in how we could do this and how we can do a tax. It could be a phase-in or something, so it's a substantial the, the amount. So we're, we're looking at all the avenues so everybody can vote for this together. So you're not going to look at them separately. As Senator Cain jumps back in, by the way, um, listen, you can't separate the gas tax from these other taxes because there's a revenue question as we talked about As Senator Cain jumps in. Put your hand up because I'd love to have you jump into the conversation. Listen, we all know what the issues are and I'd love to get your involvement. Senator Cain, jump in and put your hand up. I'd love to get you into okay. the conversation. The first thing we need to focus on is what's keeping people in the state of New Jersey. And the most important thing is keeping three generations of families in New Jersey. Too many of us know our brothers and sisters are out of state, our parents are leaving, our kids are getting the first jobs out of state in New Jersey. So we need to look at whether it's improving the roads and the infrastructure, lowering the overall tax burden for the people in New Jersey, all as a piece. And if you look at one solution, which I've introduced on the estate tax, it phases out, excuse me, it gets rid of the estate tax, about $350 million. Over how much, it, how long it, a period? It, this would do it immediately, but we have to do it but the most important thing you can do is get it done right now because it sends that message very importantly to people who are thinking about leaving the state of New That's Jersey. That's $400 million. It's, three, it's, three, it's $350 million. Close to four. And then, And then what you do is you partner it with a, the pension. You increase by 50% the uh, retirement pension uh, tax. Or you, excuse me, you reduce it by the deduction by 50%. So what happens is... It, what is now taxed at twenty thousand dollars goes up to thirty thousand dollars. Because the way you need to look at this is, people are leaving the state of New Jersey. And they're going to Florida. They're going there and they're building their hospitals there. They're building the infrastructure there. Or they're doing the research there. And then you're losing not only that type of structure, but you're also losing six years of income taxes. You also have people who are moving and retiring because Pennsylvania doesn't tax retirement income. You're lo losing people to Pennsylvania, and they're not moving there for the weather. Because what you've got here is you've got to make sure that people are staying in the state of New Jersey. It needs to be done now so we send the right message. And I think we can focus on the state budget in a way it says with six years of increased income tax revenues. Because as you're going around and you're talking to people, you saw this survey. People think we're just one June away from another tax increase. 
And that's impacting people's hiring decisions. It's impacting where they want to keep their families. Mm. It's impacting where they want to send their kids to school. And if you always think that you're going to, your taxes are going to increase every step of the way, that's a very volatile uh, situation to have for the citizens. Cut the estate the tax Jersey. now. Yes. And as you would support as well, as well as the pension. And you would support I think we tax. need to focus. No. I think overall, the transportation solution, there are a myriad of options that exist. Simply saying that we have the lowest tax in one thing is not a justification for increasing that tax just because it has to be increased. Senator? I guess we've been talking to each other because we both agree with the retirement tax. Oh, you do? Reducing retirement income. You know, Steve, this is one of the states. And, and you know, and if you talk to people that are on retirement, they'll say, I understand the state and inheritance, but I'm living here right now. How do I stay here? And we're one of the states that actually taxes retirement income. And you know, there's been a lot of bad decisions by both parties for a lot of years. And you gotta start unraveling these things, but you have to do it it's in, in, in its bound scale. As the speaker says, you can't put a $400 million hole in your budget when we owe the pension $1.5 billion. You know, so it's like, it's a balancing act. Can it be done? It can be done. Immediately, as Senator yeah. Kane said. I, we agree, it can. Listen, these things can be done. They just have to be done in a way that it works. You know, you don't, it, it really, Steve, it's, 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 it's really, it's a balancing act. Would you do it immediately in, would you support Senator Kane's bill to do it immediately? Well, look, the retirement income, you could raise the threshold right now. Right now, for an individual, it's 15000 For a couple, it's twenty. You could take that up to forty or fifty. dollars uh, you, know, you know, single. Right away, that, that would capture 75% of the people that are retired in the state right now. Uh, the, the estate tax is another thing that could be phased out. I think we all are looking at these is issues, Steve, because they're legitimate, but we're also, we also have to look at the budget yeah. as Clearly. a whole. Yeah. So that's why I say, can you, you can, can you do it? Yeah, you can do it, but it has to be done in a way that you don't blow everything up at the you same time. You can't look time. at them separately. Yeah. Well, I, I Listen, yeah. retirement income to me, is first and foremost because people are actually living here, they're alive. You know, you in, the state tax, in the state taxes, you're like my father will tell you when I'm going, you can have whatever you want, but I'm living here right now. <laughs> and and but the but the All point right. is, yeah. reduce the burden on people that are living in this state now. Got it. And you know, but but they both, can they both be done? They can be done if we work together in a smart fashion. You're smiling, you I, want in. Go, I, go. I, I think, it, it, I'm smiling because, you know, I think we have somewhat a intelligent audience here. Well, so, was, excuse uh, me, somewhat? Hey, Vin, you want to make somewhat, friends? I guess, you I have guess. a somewhat intelligent audience? Somewhat intelligent moderator. Somewhat intelligent and <laughs> the, the moderator included. But when I, relatively say, when I, when I say that, I'm, I'm just, uh, uh, just put it this way. Of course, with Senator Kane, 400 million it's close to 400 so take 350 you're talking about the pension you're talking which I think it's the right thing to do that's about another hundred million when you uh, when you double it even from 20 to 40 the exclusion keeping the cap at a hundred a uh, hundred thousand so now you're close to 500 million half a billion dollars so now you have a 500 billion dollar hole where are you getting that money you need to be realistic and each and every one of you know that and for me it's simple arithmetic when I had you know my small business it was all things needed to add up. It didn't have to be complex math. So the issue is there has to be some net benefit. And the net benefit, that's what we keep talking about, the transportation trust fund. And how do we get these good things to do to lower these burdens, to keep the people here? Listen, I want to make sure our, our children stay here. So this is the important thing. But you have to be realistic. You can't just say, I want to lower this. you got a hole. And if I tell you, we, we do have a revenue problem because then you're not have an additional half a billion dollars and with the Senate president said we were 1.5 billion that we owe for pension so we keep getting into a bigger hole so we are just getting a bigger shovel and digging the whole thing real deeper. quick before John jumps back in do you think it's particularly a good time to raise the gas tax because gas prices are lower. I, I think that that is one of the biggest incentives here. When you have gas average at two, 249, 239, I, see, I saw it yesterday, the average is about 260 in the nation. And we are the second lowest. And we don't need to go to number one, but we just need to stay. And we're going to stay competitive because we'll stay substantially below our uh, neighbors. Say good time to do it. And good time. And more than almost 40% of the gas board here is from out of state. John. 
first and foremost, we have to look at the polling numbers with respect to people who are thinking about leaving this state. That is a number that's really important. So when we formulate policy, ultimately, that's the statistic we have to watch. Now, the, uh, the speaker says, well, where are we going to find the money? If we actually talk about things that may be politically incorrect, such as changing the school for, uh, formula that now came from the Supreme Court, we can save possibly a billion dollars. Money is going in the districts that are now fairly successful towns, such as Hoboken. There are things we can do within the budget to find savings. But more importantly, the message jointly with this governor is to the, those people who are thinking about moving this state, we are working as one unit in Trenton, not units that are fighting that leave the people in the state of New Jersey confused about the direction of this state. And so you want to make it clear no more new taxes. I, I, I agree with that statement. I just, I just want to say, I'm not saying, not an original thought, uh, but I say, here's what I, I say. see Governor DeFrancesco uh, no, here, and I, well, I, he's not for new taxes either. Hey, all right, when well, no one's for new taxes, I'll stipulate to that. So you're just going to stay there quietly? But no, <laughs> wait a minute, no one's for new taxes. The question becomes, we've got an issue with respect to roads and highways, and we must solve that problem. But, and and. You'd like to say yes or no. The yes, answer yes or no, because gas prices are low, and Vinnie Prieto says it's a perfect time to do it because that, they're going to go up again at some point. Why not now? That's a multiple question. Yeah. Yeah, See, I love that. I love gas prices are down. The question is, we must show that we're willing to lower taxes too. But that period. Okay, by applause. <laughs> by applause. How many people say, you know what? Clearly, we don't want new taxes. Don't applaud for that. Um, but if you're going to raise a tax, now is about the best time to raise a gas tax and have all that money go to the Transportation Trust Fund. By applause. Go ahead. A smattering. What kind of question is that? Well, I'll, I'll, <laughs> yeah. Okay, now, you ask the question then. Okay. All right. How many people just want to raise the gas tax? Thank you very much. No further questions. That's question. a ridiculous question. Yeah. It's the oh, same what? as you. That's yeah. the whole thing. Steve, 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 how do you Steve, want to ask Steve, the question? See, Steve, Steve, this this is what I'm kind of concerned that when we look at polling, right. we look at polling that may keep somebody out of office, and that's what scares me, and that's why we have to do the difficult lift and talk about it. How you frame the question is, yeah. if you raise a gas tax that it's 100% dedicated to uh, improve our road infrastructure, take care of our 36% of our road in, uh, bridges that are either obsolete or in disrepair and is structurally unsound, would you vote would you vote for that? By applause. I got one more. Now the problem would be you can't keep someone on the phone that long to ask that question, Vinny. That's the only problem. Well, you gotta you gotta frame it in, in but, so you're saying if we don't do this, you implied in that question, Mr. Speaker, that if you did not do this Could. that the roads and bridges would get more and more dangerous and that really bad things would happen. It could. Is Absolutely. that engaging in hyperbole, Senator? Is that dangerous to do that? So. Or is it a fact? Well, it's a, listen, Steve, I'm the one that actually builds bridges up here. You know, Are you saying not, you're the only one who does this? I'm the only one that knows how to build a bridge. That would be true. I've seen your hands. That's true. I've, I've seen your hands, so. Steve. <laughs> okay? So, I can tell you, we, we did a tour. Things, we could do things. With, <laughs> never mind. Okay. So can I. Okay. So, you know, I've been up and down the state looking at the infrastructure. You're not supposed to be able to look through a beam. You're not supposed to. No. For a beam, for a beam. Exactly is a beam. You know, that's a metal steel piece. <laughs> that holds You're it not up. supposed to be able to look through the middle of it. Go ahead. I was in Edison with Nancy Pinkett. We were in Edison on a bridge, and I'm not kidding you, I, w I didn't want to even be on it. How bad was it? It was rated like a four or five. It was reduced. Whenever they reduce the weight on a bridge, you know what that means? We got a problem. What could happen, Senator? Eventually, you'll have a bridge fall. You have a bridge failure, and you know something, you hopefully no one dies, Minnesota. and this isn't something that you want to send the other. We have bridges in New Jersey that are worse than the bridges in the Connecticut collapsed that we're utilizing. You know, we scale from one to a hundred. Ten percent of our bridges are failures. Now think about, you know, Steve, the question is, do you want to improve your commute? You know, that's what it comes down to. And if you want to improve your commute to work, well then, you're going to be in favor of funding, somehow funding transportation. Because the minute you shut down a bridge, and we've all had this, where you're normally headed to the corner store, right? and that bridge is out now for a right. year and a half, you get pissed off. E hold on. 
Would you believe most people in New Jersey would be in favor of funding it, even if it meant an increase in their gas tax? Do you Steve, believe that? I believe if you explain what we're doing and you constitutionally, constitutionally mandate that all the money goes every where penny. Every penny. Listen, Tom and I were prime sponsors of the unemployment tax. Yes, you are. Right? Where it was being raided. This year, the tax protection. Protection. Not the tax. Right. right. The protection well, they, of it. Protection <laughs> yes. of it. Right? Protect, we right. protected it. This year, right. it's going to go down a billion dollars yep. because we're not letting people use it for other things. Into the general treasury. Exactly. Right. Right. So when you dedicate funding for its purpose, there'll be plenty of funding. The problem is the people get fed up and they right. have a right to be mad. The public has every right the, to be mad when money is being used for others. We're going to fix it. The, the, the TTF we're gonna, hold on, we're going to fix it. It's going to be fixed. The, the, the TTF, when it was put through, and currently Transportation Trust Fund is constitutionally dedicated. That's not a new concept. The TTF currently yes. is, is, is constitutionally dedicated. Any solution that has will be addressed with efficiencies, whatever the options are, will have to be constitutionally dedicated because it's, it's the history and the legacy. The problem is, over the course of the last 30 years, the, the bond numbers changed, people stretched it out over a period of time. It was supposed intended as a revolving fund, went past in 1988, and then it went off the rails because people used it for operational expenses as opposed to, um, and they defined washing bu buses as a, a, a non-operational expense. In the, in, the, in the TTF. So that definition was abused from the 1988 definition. So number one, obviously everything's going to be dedicated, number one. Number two, obviously everybody in the room wants a safe infrastructure. The best way is trying to figure out how to do that in, first and foremost, make sure you've got the most efficient system. You don't, you don't want to build architecture over a system that is overly large. So first and foremost, how do you reduce any overlapping costs, any inefficiencies that exist within the system? That's the first thing. And then you figure out what the projects are, how to fund them. But you also get to the point of the taxes. When tax were in, the income tax was passed in the 70s, it was a 2% tax with no deductions. And what happens over time in Trenton is the tax rate scores goes up, that was one end of the spectrum, but the, the no deduction of things never gets readdressed, so now we've got higher income taxes, so we all have to look at this as one in a piece and okay. find the solutions sooner rather than later. Final comments on the uh, you don't need, infrastructure you issue. You don't need a political interpreter to listen to the four people here talking to each other, meaning that's a pretty in good indication there's going to be a solution. When? Uh, before there's a ultimate crisis. <laughs> that is a level of confidence, Assemblyman, that just is inspiring. I, it, Before it, it, has to be, it has to be done by January. Should be a focus. January when? Should be a focus. Well, listen, the government's got a budget address in February. Just January. It's January. Laughing at. It should, it should I want to know what Governor De Francisco thinks. Okay. You want to stay out of it? You want to, I'm not going to put you on the spot. <laughs> You, you hold on, wait a minute. By the way, put your hands together for Governor De Francesco, who's in the house. <laughs> Governor, you actually do you actually miss this? Are you just teasing? I miss this. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of other stuff I don't miss. But look, you know, they told you that I think John was referring to it. There'll be a solution relatively soon. Uh, I'd like to be part of that discussion because uh, I'm sure it'll be interesting, but uh, I think they, they're saying that they will resolve this issue in a positive way within the next few months. That's what you're hearing. That's what I'm hearing. Before there's a crisis. There won't be a crisis. Okay. Um, why don't we move on then? Um, you heard it. We'll see what happens in He January. speaks our language. Uh, apparently. Apparently. Thank you. Nick, you got that? Okay, you got that, Nick? You write that down? Exactly. Why don't we move to the, uh, by the way, anyone has any questions, put your hands up. But I have this question. Let's talk about uh, paid sick leave. Who wants to take on paid sick leave issue? John, go ahead. You know, the last thing we should do. Put it in context. What it, what it is? What is the issue and why does it matter? Well, the issue is that it would require employers to give you a certain amount of sick time based on the hours you work. Beautiful idea. Great idea for Most, some. I think it is. Beautiful idea. Most employers do it. And in the perfect world, 
it's conceptually great. In theory. In New Jersey, where we're already the most overregulated, highest tax, anti-business climate, don't do anything more to, uh, to put, impose more regulation on business. At some point in the future, when we are just flourishing, right. maybe that's something we talk about. Not now. Not now. Ain't that complicated. Not a good time. Of course not. <laughs> People, b businesses are deeply concerned about staying in New York. Businesses Jersey. just getting over Obamacare. We don't need this, right? Well, that's They're just another Obama problem. Did they get over Obamacare? Look, I the, respect the, the speaker. Not, not yet, I not get, I two different the concept. Two different not, not a, and, here's and, here's no. the larger question if I'm interpreting uh, your colleague. you got to be kidding with another regulation. Even if it's a good idea, let us do it on our own. You agree? Well, the, the issue is, is about a fairness. If it's about the right thing to do, do you want an employee to come in sick that is not a productive employee, or if not, they have to take out and then they can't put food on the table? You have to think of those people. I always think of back from me where, where I came from. And also, do you want to have- Hudson County? The, back, back, uh, back from struggle <laughs> with Hudson County, sorry. yes. So, Cuba? and well, even before, even tougher. But- uh, Cuba? Uh, you meant Cuba. The, Cuba. the issue, yes. I was and, trying to clarify. And just to think about it, you want to put an employee, a sick employee that serves you uh, food and is you know, liable to get other employees sick, get other people sick. These are the right thing. And John says it. He goes, most people are doing it. So we want to just do it out of uniformity because now municipalities have taken up this task and have been doing some. it piece by me. Right. Some of them. And it's been moving. Uh, there's a movement. So we want to be able to control it and make it uniform. I I think it's the right thing, but when you think about it and uh, and you say that this is uh, we're very anti-business, I you know I quote. He, he never, no, he never said anti-business. What he's questioning is legitimate question: Is it the no. role of the government to tell a business, particularly a small business, this is what you're going to do with your employees, I, I, or I, allow that business person I, to manage his or her business? I Big think, difference. I think that there is a quality of life issue here. I need, think we do have a responsibility, just as we put. Uh, safety net programs that I was a recipient of and help people to be able to better their lives. You think paid sick leave is comparable to that? I think, I, I really do. Steve and then Tom. Well, we did sick leave. Uh, we, we did family leave. Yeah. Paid, paid family leave. And you know something? And it was the right thing to do. Yeah. It absolutely was the right thing to do. And you know something? The sky didn't fall. The world didn't end. Mm -hmm. The tax went from $36 on the employee, not the employer. It was 100% paid pay, family leave. On paid family leave, down to $18. And it was never abused. Over 100,000 families utilized it. It was actually a benefit. Now, Steve, you know, the, the debate on, on sick leave right now is in the assembly. I'm going to see what it looks like when it comes out of there, and then we'll start our discussion. But for now, I'm going to look at them. But look, paid, paid sick leave didn't hurt, you know, paid family leave didn't hurt. And I'll argue that minimum wage didn't hurt this economy either. In fact, we're up, not down. And states with higher minimum wage have stronger economies. Stay on that. On the paid sick leave issue, I guarantee you there are people in this room I know the answer. running their businesses who have concerns about this or a question. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Who's got something? Who's got something? And because uh, Vinnie Prieto says it is the role of the state government to get involved here. Um, talk about this, Matt. Well, I, I agree with uh, Assemblyman Bradnick that now is not the time really to address this. We're trying to overcome a reputation as being a, a really a business unfriendly place to be. And we don't want that reputation. Adding something like this right now is not good timing. While it may be a valid issue, I don't think now is the time to do it. The, the other part of it is we have municipalities in this state that are enacting paid sick leave uh, ordinances. I think Newark has done it. Jersey City, Michael, they've done it in Montclair. Which, eight, eight, which, eight. which is which is absolutely poison for business because you don't know what to do if you don't know what locality you're in. That's that's, terrible. that's my point. So you say do it across the board? Of course. We should bar you're from doing it. Uh, say, oh, uh, say that say, again. We should bar or ban municipalities from passing that kind of ordinance. So why not introduce a piece of legislation barring an individual municipality from actually doing this? Because it's not going to get posted by the speaker, that's why. <laughs> You're a funny guy. 
That's what the minority does. But he also happens that's to be it. accurate. You won't post it, will you? I, I actually would like to have a uniform, and that's the bill that I'm planning on posting. You won't post the bill that would bar a municipality. I, I would not take the ability for municipalities to govern themselves, no. Who's got something on paid uh, sick leave? Anyone else? Anyone else? Okay, I got some other thoughts back here. Yeah, anyone else? Particularly if you run a business, talk about the impact you feel it would have on your business. Tell us who you are and what business. One second, Carol. Tell us who you are. I'm Carol Stillwell. You can't take the microphone again. I can't. <laughs> okay, I'm Carol Stillwell. I own a small business in Raritan Center. I've had that business for 40. I can't take it. I can't take it. I own. Thank you. I owned that business for 45 years, and the reason I got into business and wanted to be a small business owner was that I wanted to treat my people the way I wanted to be treated. And that's the way I've run my business for 45 years. That's right. My, my people get sick leave whenever they need it. I don't think it needs to be dictated by government, quite candidly. The reason I'm in small business is because I care about my people and I believe that the majority of small business owners today have that, that ability to do that and that's what they want to do. That's why they decided to be entrepreneurs. But Carol, stay right yeah. there. Playing devil's advocate, that's what you do. But what about if the business down the street, the business owner doesn't have the same sense you do? And that business owner couldn't care less about his or her employees and they want them to come in, sick or not, that person comes in, they spread germs. That person comes in, their family suffers because they really need to be with their family. You say? Then I say we need to educate them a little bit. That's what I say. And they I don't get the education. Is it then not the role of the I, government to step in? I don't believe it's the role of the government to step in. I'm sorry, I disagree Even with you. Even if that business owner wouldn't do the right thing in the way you would? Then that business owner shouldn't be in business. Somebody needs to do something about hey, it. Some, but isn't Roy, that somebody ultimately the government? Then you want the government to step in in everything that we do as a small business owner because we find somebody that comes in and perhaps doesn't do the right thing Look on that given day. Look at him with the microphone here. Look at the cop. Look at the. Rich, you see this? You warned me. You did. You did, Frank. But so you say this is not the role of the government. Absolutely not. Even the role if it's of the what government. you would do anyway. I believe. I believe as a small business owner, and I belong to a majority of small business owners today, I'm involved in my community, yep. I know you know that. And as far as I'm concerned, I believe they will do the right thing. Does everybody in this room do the right thing every day? Or do you measure them by that? Let me tell you something, they don't. But we will learn and we do grow, and as far as I'm concerned, I don't want government involved in telling me what to do in my business with regard to sick leave. I do the right thing. Uh, uh, Steve, Steve, why don't we incentivize those who incentivize those who give sick leave as opposed to punish all businesses and therefore the people who do the right thing get an incentive. Mr. Speaker, I think you would want now want to respond to Carol. Well, and, and Carol, just, just to let you know, I was a business, uh, you know, small business. The business is still there. My brother-in-law is the one that has that business. And I agree with you. you got to do the right thing, but not everybody does the right thing. So they shouldn't be in business, but that doesn't mean they're, they're not going to stay in business. And then the quality of life of what Steve had mentioned is the issues. But business, but government, you know, it, it's got to work both ways. You want government then to be able to give you incentives and cut and different things things, incentives, as we have done, so we have to protect some, some protections there for people. So I think, you know, we can agree to disagree on certain things, but all the businesses that are doing, then theoretically, they'd be exempted because they're already doing it. So when you look at that, it's only the bad actors that you are okay. really going to dictate to, not the good actors, because they're already doing it. So at the end of the day, those, by incentivizing them, you're already doing it. So you're doing the right thing. And it's about a fairness issue and the right thing. So I, I just, that's the way I, I believe. Mr. Speaker, and, you know. I'm sorry for interrupting because we've got five minutes left. I want to do a real quick one on this and then pension reform, final comments. Marshall, anything new, anything different? Yeah. As a small business person, I'm Robert Consulting. I run an engineering company. I compete for employees. Part of that is my employee package. When you tell me as the state, I have to provide a minimum package, I've provided uh, sick care for my employees. Now when that person comes to me and goes, where's my sick care? I don't care about you. That's a minimum. Now I have to go find another way to incite and bring an employee in and compete with my other competitors that are in this room for quality people. Why do I have to now find a new expense 
to t keep, take care of my uh, people because you now made it a common barrier so, for so everybody. I just want to understand something real quick before you get off this. You're saying that if the government were to do this, they are changing the economics of recruiting and retention of employees? Yes. Any final reaction before we move to pension on this? Okay, great. So, um, <laughs> great, okay. Um, <clears throat> Steve, help me on the pension situation. You, you were there with the governor. I saw you with your colleagues. You were there. You celebrated. You were recognized across the country. I, I he, interviewed He was, Steve. I wasn't. He was. Well, the governor was. Yeah. In fact, not to plug, because I would be, it would be unnatural for me to plug, but we have an interview coming up with the governor uh, <laughs> on the 22nd uh, in prime time on public television, NJTV and WNET. Um, at 8 o'clock, we have an interview with the governor, but I would be, it would be uncomfortable for me to be engaged in who, self-promotion. Who's interviewing him, Steve? Excuse me? Who's interviewing him? It would be me. Okay. But, um, okay. Can I plug it then? <laughs> no, no, I'm, listen, enough plugs. But here's, more importantly, I'll ask the governor about pension reform. But see, Senator, you were there along with your colleagues and you celebrated that, but then you told me later on and you told Michael Aaron and others that the deal that you cut, the compromise, that somehow it wasn't, you know, people didn't live up to it, according to you. Somehow? Well, what does that mean? Come on. You said that... that he, didn't, he didn't make the payment, Steve. Well, but he, he, by the way. The governor. Go ahead. And the governor chose not to make it. And when we signed pension reform, that was, quite honestly, easy for my colleagues over here, to be perfectly honest with. That was an easy thing. It was an easy vote. Very hard for this side. Mm -hmm. But we had to fix it, Steve. I tried to fix it in 06. No? That was a hard vote for you I, guys? It, it, Steve, is you... Are you saying because of the public employee union yeah. it was harder for you? For, for Democrats. Go ahead. That's what I, you mean. I, so, so in 2000... I'll you a listen, Senator, I two th listen, Steve, I started this discussion in 2006. You did it before anyone. And, that's and, true. And, and you know, and, and John Corzine, if he had followed along, probably would still be the governor. You Are know, you implying that he wasn't as strong to well, stand he, up? Well, he didn't back the reforms that were Shocking. needed. Shocking. Well, listen, it, it's unfortunate because this is about people's retirement. Yep. Steve, this is what it's about. It's, it. it's, it's, it's commitments to people that were made, and there's no do-over buttons where you can start a career over and be Got 21 it. again. So when we did the legislation, he knew how difficult it would be to fund it. That's why we did a thing called The governor smoothing. knew that. Yeah, we did seven year, a seven-year sp uh, spread to make the payment. Make the payment, you cure the pension. 25 years from now, the pension payment's $1 billion. 25 years from now. Got it. It's real big right now for one reason. The state didn't make their payment. Municipalities, the League of Municipalities did a great job breaking down. Municipal pensions are in good shape. County pensions are in good shape. Police and fire are in good shape. The ones that are in trouble are the state pensions. The teachers, Got it. the, the uh, public employees, and the judges, because they didn't fund them. So it's not that hard to figure out pensions when you want to return you can't, they're numbers. You know, it's simple math equations. The governor broke his word, and as far as I'm concerned, that stops me. Like, was it a double pinky swear next time to do to to, to keep a double the pinky swear? Yeah, yeah, to keep the commitment. You know what I mean? Come on, and Steve. Broke, it was broke the deal. It absolutely broke the deal. I, broke the deal, Senator he, King. He, uh, there are a lot of people talking about pension reform in 2006, 2007, 2008 as we were building towards this. And, the, and any vote impacts lots of different people. It's never an easy vote. In the legislature, you always look back and you see every single vote you cast throughout. And any bill that impacts lots of people is never an easy vote. But when you get every single Republican in the state legislature voted for the pension reform bill, but only a third of the Democratic caucus voted for that those reform bills. So in terms of easy votes going through, the issue is how do you make sure on every single budget going through, you make the right decisions. And making the pension payments, we need to make the pension payments and we need to do it in a responsible way. And if we pay it, you know, I was one of the people who responsible the bill to try to pay for it over seven years. Did the state keep it forward? We need to do better with the t tough economic time. I think we can do it over 10 years. And we have to, but that commitment is firm from the state, but we need to make those pension payments. It's clear. Steve. Was the deal broken? Well, the Democratic majority could have easily cut parts of that budget and said, let's put that in the pension. Did they choose to do that? They chose 
not to do that. They could have cut money out of other areas of the, of the budget. They said, you oh, go ahead to pension. Yeah. So come on, a, come on. Well, you could have, Seriously. You could have done Seriously, that. enough of this you BS. Could, you wanted to raise taxes. You know, you know, listen, you wanted to the, raise no, taxes. No, yeah, we showed you could fund the pension. The governor chose not to fund it. You know, there was never, there was never a discussion, ever, mm. where no matter what, I can't do anything else. You know, he never a discussion of that. There was a commitment to fund the pension. He uh, he chose not to fund it. So the, now to say that chose we chose not no, to? No. Of course he did. We we did a budget. Send we put budget. a budget on his desk that funded it. These guys and, have come on air with no, us, and when Michael Aaron and others said the money's not there. Listen, Steve. By, Steve, by, Steve, Steve, by choice. choice. By, by choice, choice the money's not there. Yeah, no. Steve, listen. It was we cut business taxes by fi five hundred and forty million dollars. We did, right? Together. Together. So we can cut business taxes. That's a good thing. We agree. Yeah. But when it comes time to guarantee people's retirement income, we can't do anything with that. Because? Because if we have to tax millionaires, that's a taboo. It Which you believe in. Yeah, I do. Because I think everyone should pay their fair share. Okay. And honestly, and there was an article about two months ago that says what's wrong with this country right now is you have people on the high end, the one percenters, that are consuming all the money. Now. And what's wrong with us? I mean them? What's wrong with them? Well, no, I'm going to be one of them. No, I said, I no, I said what's there's wrong nothing. with them. Listen, what's wrong is, Steve, the gap is growing so greatly, there's no one going to be able to pay for the, for, the, for the products that people sell. You know, you have more, more taxing of those people in all seriousness? Steve, Steve yes, yeah, more taxing, all seriousness. After everything that was said about losing people? People. Steve, Steve, listen. They are the biggest benefactors of the economy right now. Money isn't getting into the middle income. You know when the economy is striking a little bit better here? When we raise the minimum wage. Connect that back to the well, pension well, real quick. The penny, it's real simple. We made a promise. When we signed the bill, we signed the bill, right? Yes. We knew. A lot of fanfare. A lot of fanfare. Seven years, because we knew it was going to be hard to pay for it. You can't say halfway through it's tough, I can't do it. You, you and you know, 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 let me finish. The president let says you guys knew. Yeah, and here's one other thing. It was based on growing the economy. And if this administration's policies were so great, then the economy would have grown the way he projected, which we, you know, he talks about budget. We say these numbers are bull. We can't well, argue. They certify. Here's the secret. Here's well, the listen, secret. General, final here's comments. Because I'm getting, I'm getting the, the private sign. sector. In the private Michelle, sector. Michelle, I'm getting the sign. What? The, the new president's giving me the sign, but go ahead. In the private sector, every day things change. That happens in the public sector, and we have to be flexible, and we're going to have to look at further pension reform to save that pension. The, be flexible. The, the, That's the, the, the solution absolutely. was a billion and a half dollar tax increase on corporate, on income, and on people across the state of New Jersey, and it was unsustainable. We need to find the right solution in the very short order. So, you know what? You know what's nice? We'll just, we'll just put it to the little people that are expecting their pensions. They are getting their pensions. Forget about that. Forget they about are getting their pensions. Yeah, they're going to go back you know, for 10 years. You know they're getting their pensions. And you, you know, know that they're going to go back for 10 years. You know they're getting their pensions. Let me just say this. Gentlemen, you know you're getting gentlemen how about this? I promised you a candid dialogue with our legislative leaders. By applause, how many people believe we got a candid dialogue with our legislative leaders.